Uh, now it's uh, time to listen to the airports, I think. So I'm asking uh, Francine Corterial, who is the manager airport operations at Lisbon Airport, to uh, talk to us a bit about uh, their, what they learned on how they saw the summer of uh, 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So move forward. Hello, our situation were, was chaotic this summer. Let's see what happened. I don't have, I have a more traditional presentation than Jeffrey's, uh, but I will skip some slides because they are just, I'll go through an introduction, the facts and figures that maybe explain what happens in Lisbon, our layout and capacity, the punctuality issues and uh, the, the challenges for our summer. As an introduction, just to tell you that we are part of a group, the Portuguese group of uh, a group of Portuguese airports, which is now which now belongs to a bigger group, a bigger international group, which is Vinci, that in 2019 has 45 airports, purchasing part of a big airport, European airport, and in, in the first semester of 2019. Lisbon Airport is facing, since the last years, an impressive growth. The figure speaks for itself. In the last five years, we grew 80, 82% of, of, of the passengers, which means we have a, we have a declared capacity and uh, uh, an infrastructure for 18 million, maybe rising 22 million, and now is processing 29 million passengers. It's amazing. The figures are for 2018 were a growth in aircraft movements of 7% and 8.9% of passengers. But the, not to forget that what happened in 2017, we grew 12% in aircraft movements and 19% in passengers. The, why we are growing, why Portugal or Lisbon is in the spotlight? TAP has its regional up there, and it's the gateway to Africa and South America. The destination seems to be attractive, and the geopolitical situation brings more security for those who choose their holidays far from areas that were, it was, at least in the last three years, uh, it, was, it was an issue. Maybe it's not anymore, and that's why we grew so fast. The location, we have great weather, nice beaches, and in, for a small country, uh, uh, landscape diversity that attracts many people. We have good uh, infrastructure and also a good co cultural offer. The gastronomy, for those who know Portugal, the gastronomy and the wine are good, and also it seems the country has capacity to organize large events. We also have the Web Summit, not, I mentioned the Champions League final, the European Soccer Festival, the Jubilee of Aga Khan last summer, also helped in July <laughs> to increase the number of flights. But we know, now know that in 2022, we'll have a huge event for the World, world Youth the Journeys the, that will bring two million Catholics, Catholic young people to to, to the city. Lisbon and Portugal won 17 awards, travel awards last, last year. And Lisbon was considered the, a leading destination and the leading city, city break. And Portugal was the leading destination. So you can imagine the pressure that is put on the, it's not working, ah, it's working now. So the, de the, the capacity, the demand, and the, the, the demand is huge. This slide just is just to show you how confused our layout is, how confusing it is. I can't, I can't show you. <laughs> no. Ah, there? I, I just want to. No, no, I can't. I would like to po point out, and can I do it with this? Is it a pointer? No, 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 just wanted to point out. Ah, okay. 
no, no point. Okay. Sorry. We have, um, uh, uh, we have cross runways, which means that we operate as a single runway. One runway at a time, and the, small, the smallest is now, is now closed. We are parking aircraft in one part of it, and the, and the rest of the, the small runway is, is, work, is being used as a taxiway. The small runway, it's, um, mm, it, I, I, I can't show you, but it's really in front of the terminal, where we have the contact stands. I would like to point out that for a hub airport, most near the terminal, we only have five contact positions for white bodies. So the long, the long haul flights arrive, and most of them are parked on the other side of the runway. It means a long way to the terminal. It spoils the minimum connecting time for passengers, baggage, and also for the turnaround of the aircrafts that, that are being fed by the, those long hauls. Uh, <laughs> Well, the demand. <laughs> now the demand. Uh, maybe, uh, you, you can see the red squares means that there is no available slot, runway slot, in those periods. The yellow means that we have one single runway <laughs> slot in, in, in those periods, and the whites are from two, two slots and more. If you can see, per day, we have only 30 slots available, and 44% of them are from 23 to 24 hours, and then we have a night curfew. So any delay may cause some trouble. And I can't point out, this is the profile of our runway usage. The adherence do of the the airlines or the, the, the operation to the airport slots and the declared capacity. In red, as I can't point out, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm so sorry, it's okay. In red, we have the declared capacity. Huh? Ah, you have it? Ah, okay, great. Can you see? <laughs> Thank you very much. In red, we have the declared capacity. This line, this bro broken line, means the schedule. So there is total adherence from the schedule to the, uh, to, to the declared capacity. It's nearly the limit. And we have in blue, the, the blue line means the, what was the real o operation. We, and we have the gaps. <coughs> the, in yellow, we have the, the, the difference in capacity, what was given. And uh, in, in, in green, you have the gap. What was missing? What the, was given to the airlines and uh, or distributed to the airlines, and what m was not used on the time it was given? There is some lack in the very beginning of the day, where everything starts. Our first wave is seriously compromised, and then we have here we had a, a period of recovery that is used by to recover the flights that came delayed. And this goes on along the day, and for the night curfew, we have, we, unexpectedly, we have delayed flights that is operating out of the night curfew, which is not, I'm going back. What really happened? In, well, we started, we always have pretactically a contingency plan agreed with the ANSP, the, and, the, and the AOs, and also the ground handlers, because we need the, 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 their resources to, to have a fine operation. We did it into, for, in 2018. But then, first surprise, Ryanair's pilot strike, with lots of delays and cancellations. TAP had a really ambitious flight program, but then they had shortage of crew and of aircraft, even leasing some aircraft and some crew, I, it, there was not many <laughs> in the market to, for the whole operation they have planned. So they also cancelled over 2,000 2, flights, and but they were delayed uh, almost all the time. The airport, as you saw, it it's working 
and it's using its capacity up to the limit. No, not really <laughs> with a buffer for irregularity or huge irregularities. And we have a layout that does not facilitate turnaround recovery. We can see, and also we faced systematic ATM regulation, be it whether ATC management, ATC in Europe, or aerodrome capacity, which is probably what's affecting more the airport performance. This slide resumes what was said. This is the, what was operated in real and the total, the number of flights we were expecting and the number of flights that operate. You can see the differences. I will skip it. And in this flight that I took from the network manager, the, from the EAPN dashboards, and the network, the, the delays from the network, you can see that we, the flights, we, the combination with flights uh, with delay over 15 minutes or one minute makes that almost all the flights were delayed. We have nearly 80% of flights with, uh, with um, uh, or over 80% of delayed flights in departures and in arrivals we were nearly 70%. The month of June, July was the worst, but the whole summer, the whole summer we had delays. What I would like to highlight with this slide is means that we have the arrived delays. Nearly 50% of the flights ar arrived delayed, but 60% of the flights departed delayed. It means that there was no capacity of recovery. So we have to work on what is going on in the recovery of the turnarounds. The breakdown of the of the delays, <laughs> of the delay codes, so we had on the route, but the reactionary delays really is on top of, of all things, which is difficult to understand. This is the airlines, the, the airlines that does not declare much. As you can see, this is one day of June, of July. Um, we don't have many, many delays code 83, but we know the route, some of how many arrived delayed due to aerodrome capacity. So, our punctuality. These are figures from the last three years. And what is uh, visible is that consistently, summer 2000, uh, 2018 had more delays, had more flights delayed, and had more minutes of delay. This is consistent. The, July was our worst month because the very first day of July we combined, um, it was the perfect storm <laughs> with uh, problems with ACC in Marseille and other delays and also that brought lots of uh, aerodrome capacity issues and difficulty in recovery. In July we had more flights also because we had the jubilee of Haga Khan, the Prince Haga Khan, the sixth anniversary, 60th anniversary of, uh, and we had very lots of special flights for it. So what we see, it's a consistent trend of increasing delays since the beginning of the season, since April, end of March, April, that went until November. Um, in November, this is starting due, due to weather, and to low visibility operations in Lisbon, that also impacts the aerodrome capacity because it reduces the rates of or the rate of arrivals in more than 40 percent. It's a problem we are, we are not able to overcome easily, and the, all the reactionary delays that are not easy to identify, be it en route, co caused by en route regulations airline problems in the out, outbound stations or arrival regulations due to aerodrome capacity in our airport. We are, this is the, the domino effect, the knock-on effect. We are not really able, able to understand why the, so many reactionary delays, but they, they exist and they impact the whole operation the whole day. So, so to summarize, we have, the, we have a tight schedule we used almost all the declared capacity. 
because the demand is huge. Airlines put lots of pressure. Most of the time when we start talking about probably changing coordination parameters to balance arrivals and departures, airlines that suffer the impact of a tight, of a tight schedule and a tight usage of a single runway, and I must say that the ATC does its best to, to, to cope and to, to, to manage the traffic we have, airlines are the first to say, but I don't want to lose my historical slot, so it's, this, it's a problem to solve. We have we had ser serious operational irregularities, not all only the ATM problems that affected everybody, but also local problems with the, the, our bigger airlines operating there. We have a difficult layout to to operate, and we had regulations, be it en route or aerodrome. Also being in the extreme, in the limit of the south, southwest axis doesn't help because it means that the flight to Lisbon catches all the regulations <coughs> across Europe. So the challenges. First, we identified some risks. TAP now is renewing the fleet. They have many new aircraft, but those that are our concern, they are not are the new, the brand, brand new 330, 900 NEOs. They are not able yet to operate in Cat 3. And also they are training pilots and the crew. They, they are recruiting people. So, so far we don't, do not know. They are bigger than, the, the, than what we can cope in some parking stands. So we are making changes in the infrastructure to cope with, the, with this fleet. So, we do, we do not expect because we want to mitigate, but it's a risk, identified risk. ATM delays because traffic is not, uh, is not diminishing, so we expect with that some traffic disruptions, be it industrial actions, the increase of traffic, weather, etc. The risk we identified. And we also, what we have as a challenge to, 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 to improve we really need to implement, to fully implement CDM. Our tests are being good. <laughs> and um, it's not a technical issue, it's not uh, an operational issue, it's uh, with the, fa the difficulties we are facing and as we are in the network manager, I, uh, we, uh, we do appeal for some help because to increase, to enhance and to take advantage and the opportunity of every single minute in a runway, in a runway, a single runway operation, there are, there are the needs of adjustment and of what it's called the jump, jumping TTOTs. We are working with the ATC on that, but let's try if this really affect the network or being connected, this can improve. So we need to move forward with this. We have set since last year a performance group, a task force with TAP, NAV, the NSP, and the airport. Uh, we can join the other airlines, but TAP represents 60% of the traffic and caused the major impact. Uh, we are working on these issues of performance issues. We have also a summer contingency plan, working on that to improve either passenger processing, but also improving turnarounds and, and with that trying to optimize the, the, the usage of the run, runway, matching the this, this schedule with the, what, with the runway capacity. And we, start, we are starting now a development and expansion plan, for, not for the short term, but for the medium and longer term for the new system, Lisbon airport system. We will have a, we will have a new complementary airport at the southbound of the Tagus River in Montijo. So the new airport will be 30 minutes away from the, from the current airport, crossing a bridge, and the runways are nearly parallel. So uh, let's see, but this is a project for uh, three years if everything goes according to, to the plan. 
I don't have much time, but you may follow the, uh, the link uh, here for the movie of the new airport system. And that's it. Thank you very much.